Well, actors come and go, as you know, particularly in television, and uh, few seem to have uh, a real uh, lasting value. I think Martin Sheen is with us, uh, is one of those few actors. I'm talking about a couple of dozen who have created for themselves. Martin, I think, I'll tell you what I think of you, your face. A very uh, vivid image of a portrayal of the things you've done. I've really never seen you do anything bad. And I don't know of many actors that I can say that about. And maybe you haven't done that much, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen everything. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure you have. We've all done things. We have done things we would not be proud of. Less than proud of. Yeah. yeah. That's not to really pay you an unneeded compliment, but it's a way of, of asking you, has there been an accident, do you think? Do some parts come along that anybody would do a good job with? Uh, the execution of Private Eddie Slovak comes to mind. It seemed like a tremendous part to have. Sure. I think that uh, anybody that uh, was the right age and, and uh, was in touch with themselves would have done a good job on that role. That was a true story, of course. Right. So you had the history of the character to draw on, plus your own... Uh, personal feelings about what happened to him, to portray. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've played four or five people uh, in films and television shows that uh, are historic figures. Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy, one. Charlie Starkweather, uh, John Dean, and uh, one other. It escapes me right away. But uh, uh, these, these characters are somewhat easier to play because they're known figures. Yeah. And, and they have characteristics that uh, people respond to if you're able to uh, get a hold of them. But uh, I, th I think most good actors would have had the success with those parts. Well, I'm anyway. not trying to demean your talent, but anybody could have done them. I'm sure that's not true. But I was just thinking that uh, you have seemed to have portrayed a lot of well-known people. I wonder if that's been a choice of yours. A or, choice of mine? Yeah. Oh, of course. You know, uh, I mean, no, I didn't go out seeking to play well-known folks, but, right. I mean, I was available at the time these things were offered and chose to do them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Weren't afraid. I would have been a little afraid to try to portray Bobby Kennedy as you did so well, that I would have been trapped in a, almost a caricature of Bobby Kennedy, which I didn't think you did, but it was tough. Were you at all yeah. into... Uh, no, as you recall, the piece was not about Bobby specifically. He wasn't the main character yeah. that his brother Jack was at the time. And it was Bobby at the time uh, when he was Attorney General, I think he was 37, at the Missiles of October crises. And uh, it was a different Bobby than, than the uh, man we came to know later uh, in the late 60s when he was running for president. A much uh, more compassionate man, a much more mellow kind of man, and a tougher man, really, at the end than he was. He was more brash and tough in a yeah. abrasive kind of way when he was younger he and, was and ran interference for Jack. You know. Which brings us to Teddy, which I know is one of the reasons you're in Florida, yes, uh, mm -hmm. supporting Teddy Kennedy. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised to read the other day that a great m most people from the J JFK administration and even the, the Bobby Kennedy years are not with Teddy. I wonder why that's so. Uh, I wasn't aware. Was this true? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Slushing years, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some, some of them, but most are not. Mm -hmm. Most are either with Carter or, or, or not taking mm -hmm. part in the election. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we assume they should be, just because they were brothers. No, that's true. Yeah. Why are you with supporting Teddy? Well, I worked for Bobby's campaign, his first campaign for the Senate in 1964 in New York. I was living in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. And then again, during the, uh, the primaries of 68. And uh, I've, I have known the Kennedy family very briefly. Uh, I said, I mean, I'm not in intimate terms with him. But when Ted declared, they asked me if I would uh, be able to give some assistance, and uh, I was very happy to do so. I haven't done that much, really. I haven't been able to because I've been, been working. I wonder if this is helping. We're talking now a know. few days before the primary. I wonder I if anybody no, would change their vote because they're seeing Martin I mean, Sheen talk about <laughs> not like Not likely, not likely. My job, I thought would really be to talk to young people who find them interested in, in the, uh, the, uh, the primaries in the various states, uh, high school-aged kids, the senior voting age, and uh, young adults in college, to uh, see if I could get them interested in uh, working as campaign volunteers and so forth, uh, and just generally as, uh, 
a listening aid. You know. What kind of response have you been getting from young people? Very good. Really? Very well. Particularly since the draft uh, <laughs> deal has come down. That, that affects uh, all young people today, so yeah. they're very concerned about it, and they know that Senator Kennedy is opposed to the draft. Speaking of the draft and war, it makes me think of Apocalypse Now, which you played mm -hmm. the movie there. Did you uh, seek out that part, or was... No, uh, I was a replacement, as a matter of fact. They had been shooting with another fellow for some months, and uh, I don't know what happened. They dismissed him, and I was in Rome doing another picture at the time, and they called me over to... Who was the other fellow? Him. Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Yeah. What do you think of the role, as you said? Have you seen the movie? Yes. Yeah, what do you think? It. I'm movie. terribly proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. The overall effect, I think, uh, that makes me proud of it is that if you can look at the film and feel differently about Vietnam veterans, uh, then it's a tremendous success. Uh, you had a heart attack during the filming? Yes, I did. You look severe? You look, yeah, you sure. look pretty fit. Right? Yeah, I'm in better shape now than I was then. Yeah. Well, now, we've heard some incredible stories about the making of that. They're all true. They're all true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it got pretty rough. Some 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 areas of it. Got well, was there a? Se it seems to me that the, the more the part I've read about and things I've, I've thought as I've seen it myself is that it was almost every day was a new day. And what are we going to do today? Now I know there was planning, of course, for a lot of things. But <laughs> That's true. You always plan ahead, but then you don't plan for a typhoon or a flood or uh, equipment not showing up or people getting sick uh, or no sunshine when you need that or. Uh, no rain when you need that, and so we were hampered by all sorts of uh, um, uh, situations like that. You think it's the best thing you've ever done? No, no. I, I, it's, it's, I'm certainly proudest of that, uh, along with another film I did some years ago called Badlands, right. which is the one I'm, I'm most proud of. What is it that makes you proud of the film? What What have you done in Badlands that you're proud of? What is it that... Badlands is a film as a total. It was made by Terrence Malick, the fellow who did, later did Days of Heaven. Badlands was his first picture. It's when you look at the f total effect of a film, the writing, the directing, the acting, the editing, the music, uh, as it's in total, and you say, that's what I drove out to achieve. And I see it on the screen. And that happened only once really with Badlands and partially almost uh, completely with uh, Apocalypse but there was so much footage shot in Apocalypse and so much edited out uh, and not only my performance but Mom and many of the other players there's some players who gave complete performances that are not even in the picture whole really? sequences are gone really? so uh, it's not only myself but a lot of the folks who were in the picture uh, were somewhat disappointed with some of the editing. Martin, I have read so much about the movie. As a matter of fact, it was almost anticlimactic to see the movie. Yeah. But one of the things I read just recently was that you really were drunk in the opening. You really did cut yourself on the movie. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. Now, was that planned, though? Let's no. See. So you just you were no, doing take my, after take? But... No, it was my really one take. We covered it with two cameras. It was my birthday, and I had been at it all day with some of the local people. Yeah. And I was advised not to do the uh, scene. In fact, Francis asked me to go home. And I said, no, let's, let's do something here. And he said, what? What are you going to do? And I said, I've got an idea. Let's try something. So we went to work and we tried something. What the cut you see in the picture is a lot more tame than what actually happened. Mm -hmm. You see a very cut version, clean version. Well, that happens, uh, I guess, quite often. Do you think he ended up doing what he wanted to do with Apocalypse? I'm not sure. I really, uh, I've not spoken to him since uh, the film been released. I haven't had a chance to now talk to him. I really, I don't know, I'm not sure. I know some of it is terribly proud of and happy with. Well, I'm very proud of the picture. And I'm happy for him that it's successful enough to recoup uh, all the yeah. investment. Um, you know, I uh, recently read Dispatches. I don't know why I got so, around to it so long by Michael Herr, who mm -hmm. wrote the dialogue for Apocalypse. No, he wrote the narration. Or the, oh, excuse yeah. me, the narration. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. And I really now see where Apocalypse came from. To me, I think Apocalypse came from the pages of Dispatches, uh, the mm -hmm. surrealistic <laughs> impressions of Well, the they world. were both about the same war. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I can see Coppola reading Dispatches and saying, that's really got the feeling that I want. If I can get that to film. Well, actually, I think Dispatches was was uh, published almost simultaneously with our shooting. I don't think it was out until after we finished shooting. 
Nobody could have read the galley for a year and a half like before. Yeah. No. Yeah. Remember the war that was just so so yeah. real and vivid, everybody who had anything to do with it saw the same thing. Yeah. Who was artistically inclined. Yeah. Yeah. I once read, um, <clears throat> it was about a year ago, someone wrote a letter to one of the fan magazines and said, I used to be in school with a little boy named Ramon Estevez in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. And he looks just like Martin Sheen. <laughs> and they answered who back and that? said, yes, that is the same person. Who, who wrote the letter? It was in one of these, <clears throat> you know, Ask Marilyn High Gardener. Someone wrote the, wrote the letter in. It's one of your classmates from grade school in, in Dayton. As would, you know, be typical. Someone leaves town, you never hear from again. Suddenly you see him on screen. <laughs> you were saying on the Today Show that your mother is Irish, your father is... Yes, yeah, my parents are both deceased. My mother was born in a little town called Barsakin in County Tiberia. My father was from a little town in northern Spain called Pararrubios in Salvador Revolta. Mm-hmm. And they met in Dayton, Ohio, in the citizenship school. Mm-hmm. So you grew up in Dayton? Yes, I did. Always wanting to be an actor? Well, I, I always considered myself an actor. It was just a question of becoming a professional and then became only one. Yeah. Did you do good in school? Were you a good student? No, I wasn't. No. no, I daydreamed most of the way. I looked out the window and thought about what I'd do when school ended. <laughs> so I flunked out, actually. I flunked out of high school and I had to go back after my senior year and, and go to summer school to get my diploma. And so then I, after that, I went to New York. So take us through the steps. Once you're out of school, what did you do then to you? I went right to New York. And started yeah. getting acting jobs? Oh, no, you didn't get an acting job. I got a job at American Express as a stock boy. Really? Sure, I worked there for 10 months. And meanwhile, I, I would work on the side and go to auditions and try and get started as an actor. And there was a little group called the Actors Co-op. And we, we met a couple times a week in a, a loft near the old Madison Square Garden up on 8th Avenue. What year was this? 1959. Any other famous actors, actresses yes. in that group? in that group? Yeah. yeah, one of the greatest talents in the business, Barbara Streisand. Really? Yeah, we talked about it recently. I saw her at a function. But she was unknown then? Oh, very much so, yeah. She was a little girl from Brooklyn. Now, did you think then she would end up being the superstar she is? None of us knew at the time she was in that group that she was a singer. Really? We knew her as an actress, you know, and, and we were stunned to discover her later as a singer. But this little girl from our group was now playing on Broadway, yeah. You know, we, there was in, in the group, we didn't do any singing. You know, we just did scenes from plays and yeah. invited agents to come and, and witness our talents and try and get on from there. And I was a fellow, there was a fellow in the group that was working at the Living Theater, which was a very prominent off-Broadway group at that time. Judy and Beck and Judith Molina uh, ran this outfit. And uh, he was leaving that group to go into a Broadway show, and he asked me if I'd be interested in taking his place. And I said, of course, and I, I did. And I went down, I started with the Living Theater and stayed with him for two years. Up until that moment, I guess you didn't really know if acting would be what you wanted to do. But oh, you I knew it was been. always what I wanted. Really? There was never any question about that. I, I, there was always a question. Even today, there's a question of whether you can make a living. <laughs> and I, there was never a question that that was what I wanted to do, never. I wonder why people have that feeling from very early years that they want yeah. to act. Is it to escape what they are? What it's they not are? only to, I think it's to escape what you are, it's to aspire to what you can be. I think writers have it, I think painters have it, I think uh, uh, dancers have it, musicians, composers. Uh, a lot of people in the arts, I think, know at a very, very young age. It's almost disconnected from your personal too, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an ambition and dream, and it really has nothing to do with where you're from necessarily, what your parents did, what, what you're good or bad at. It's, no. it's an aspiration. It's a disease that can strike anyone, anywhere, anytime. How did you pick the name Sheen for you? I so picked Martin from a fellow that was uh, very encouraging to me as a young actor in New York when there was very little encouragement going around. A fellow by the name of Robert Dale Martin. He was a casting director at CBS. Mm-hmm. And the Sheen I took from Bishop Sheen, I figured yeah. he was a pretty fair actor. <laughs> I kind of liked his work. And, I, the name just seemed to fit my face, and so I took it. But I never changed my name. It's still legally. Still Ramon Estevez. And you have a son here. I want uh, Emilio, right? Emilio, so my keep, oldest son. Keep him in. Emilio, where are you? I don't think he knows about this. Come, come here, son. We want you to. <laughs> I want the audience to see. Uh, Emilio. To see you. And, and hey, this is his television debut. We oh, just oh. made our stage debut together. Oh, great. 
Come here. Hi. Join us. Hi. Just sit, sit there with Share this chair with me. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see us both here on this deal? Everybody uh, likes to see everybody's every, son. Everybody thinks this is my bodyguard muscles here. <laughs> but this young, handsome man. Was, now, uh, you guys are appearing together at uh, where? Yeah. At the Bird Runners what, Dinner Theater. We what, just closed last night. What was the play? Uh, Mr. Roberts. And you played one of the swabs? Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, hold mic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, how old are you? 17. 17. So what were you doing when you were 17? I was in my senior year in high school, just like him. <laughs> and uh, doing pretty well. He's far ahead of you. He's acting uh, in professional theater already. That's true. Yeah. You yeah. think that's what you want to do for Oh, yeah. I think I'll have to see that the rest of my life. He's been a great help. Has he? He's yeah. encouraged you to be an actor? Now, I would think a father might say and think of them some of the tough years in New York. Emilio, do something else. Go to college, get a degree, become an accountant. Or something. Do I'm something sure that he's the exact words. He <laughs> hasn't made any effect. <laughs> he wants me to become a doctor or a lawyer. But, uh, I, I can't see myself being happy doing something like that. I get, you know, I get a lot of joy out of, out of What's the that. earliest memory you have of seeing your father act? Um, you know, on an Outer Limits or something that I saw him. Yeah. He doesn't remember it, but years ago, uh, he was uh, 1966, I guess he was four years old. I was touring the United States in a play, The Subject is Roses, which Jack Alvis and I had done on Broadway for over a year. And we were now on the road, and we were playing the National Theater in Washington. And the opening night, my wife Janet brought Emilio to the theater, and he was sitting in the president's box. And it was, would be the first time he would ever see me out. So I played my heart out. I thought I was terrific, and I couldn't wait to his reaction at the end of the show. And I waited around, and no one showed up. And I asked the uh, doorman, did the lady and a little boy come back in? They said, no, no, no. I waited around a long, long time. It got to be midnight, and they were closing the theater, and I went home. And there was Janet, calmly sitting in the kitchen waiting for me. And I said, what happened to Emilio? She said, oh, didn't they tell you? We left after the first scene. He fell asleep. <laughs> that's terrible. That's you remember that? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Well, that's fair. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, two brothers and a sister. No, are they all show business in Clyde? Well, I have a brother, the brother right Who's under Who's closer to? He's a dancer. Yeah. He's a great tap and uh, jazz dancer. His name is Ramon also, Ramon Jr. And uh, I have a brother, Carlos, who likes to be called Charlie, but uh, he wants to become a pro baseball player. Okay. And your sister? My sister is named Renee, and she's into uh, horses. She likes horses. <laughs> Okay. She competes in the question. Yeah. question and you all live in California. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been married? We, we, we met in 1960, late 1960. We were married in 61, so it's, it's 19. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. It's hard to keep a family together. I often hear show business. So oh, like in any know. business, you know, the world today is not conducive for family living, it seems. It is not. Well, you can be proud of, of Emilio, and I'm sure the other I'm two. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> yeah, I should be proud of your father, too. Right. Martin Sheen, Emilio, Estevez, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank right. you. We'll be right back.
Oh, Martin Sheen, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back. This sound? No, just so sorry. Hi, I'm Martin Sheen, and I'll be on Montage Saturday. Let's sound a little slubby screen. Let me try one more. Just okay. keep doing it. Where's your Hi, I'm Martin Sheen, and I'll be appearing on Montage Saturday. Um, tonight. We need one with tonight. Hi, I'm Martin Sheen, and I'll be appearing on Montage tonight. Great. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you.